Hey everybody, David and the birthday boy, Michael Ferguson here from Aerial Influence. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by for the podcasting to celebrate Michael's birthday. Happy birthday, Michael. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, you're Appreciate welcome. it. Uh, so today we are gonna be covering the state of drone spraying, the state of spraying in terms of drones in the United States right now. These are big overseas, obviously in Japan and China, they've been using them for quite a while. Yeah. Um, recently, you know, we've been working with them for several years now, especially you have. Yeah. Um, but just over the past like year and really in the past six months, we've started to see a lot more interest in these yeah, we um, from potential agriculture cu customers. So what we wanted to do today was just kind of talk about the realities of drone spraying and really talk about some of the biggest hurdles. So let's start out with the biggest hurdles. What do you think the biggest hurdle is stopping people from getting into drone spraying? Uh, well, I mean, from our point of view, I mean, we kind of want everybody to be set legally and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, get their licensing, the 107, the 137. So I would say, you know, I keep on saying, just in short, getting legal, but basically paperwork in line, that kind of stuff. You're getting exemptions, you yeah. know, it's it's a little bit deeper than like a waiver. So there's some planning involved and, and it, takes it, time. It, it, it takes a lot of time, especially right. with the, uh, the uh, crap show that we had this year. Yeah. I mean, there's bottlenecks, there are, um, Lane Cho had uh, resigned from the so FAA. That, yeah, and then so now we've got Pete Buttigieg. Buttigieg. Yes. Yeah. So close enough. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> um, yeah, we've seen our exemption, you know, which was submitted to the FAA. We've seen it now. I guess I don't know if it's travel or it was it was moved up to Department of Transportation because they're mm -hmm. kind of the bigger umbrella. Um, I, I'm not sure why that was. I don't know if it was a Again, you know, the elections, that kind of stuff, sure, or the sure. step down of the FAA, you know, acting. Chairman. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is make sure that nobody gets kind of stuck, you know. Right. You know, if it's 200 days and then they've missed the, you know, their their time to spray or whatever, and then they're holding on to the drone, and basically it's sitting for almost a year, mm -hmm. we, you know, we, we just don't want that. So yeah, you've got to know, you know, what you want to use because, uh, you know, what we were asking is, uh, can we just add the T20 to our T16? Right. But because there were different components, the FAA uh, needs to look into that. Um, so I guess, I mean, this is kind of a learning lesson for, for everybody. It's like DJI, you know, if, if, if they want stuff to get adopted more, mm -hmm. you know, there has to be, I guess, some idea of what's coming down the pipeline because if we're waiting 200 days yeah, and, and we're saying the T-16, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then if something changes on it, then, you know, you, you could potentially be screwed. We also have other drones that you could potentially get started with, like as you're waiting on your petition to, to finally come back and that you have your 137 for spring, yeah. you could also jump into like the multi-spectral side of things with the Phantom 4 right. uh, multi-spectral or the Phantom 4 RTK as well to do mapping and all sorts yeah, of Yeah, because they all, they all work together. And um, yeah. and, and that's, that's a great thing because we are seeing like, the hardware that DJ has uh, is really good. Yeah, you know, and and it's it's user friendly. I I, I know that uh, sometimes the software um, people don't like. You know, we've heard you know pros and cons. Yeah. Uh, with with regards to Terra, like and, and mapping in general, um, I don't know that we always suggest Terra because we have you know all kinds of uh, different clients. Clients. Yeah. But in this case, Terra is nice because it does help with the planning and the exporting to the T16 or the MG1P or, you know, whatever, the, the T400. Right, so it all works in the same, same sort of ecosystem. Yeah. Essentially, it makes but, it a little easier, yeah. Yeah, and then go, also going back to what you're saying, you know, starting with the multispectral, that's still, you know, you can get great information from that. Yep. Um, we need to dive more into that. Yeah, so it's like we always say, it's like, Wow, there's a ton of information here, and right. we don't know how to read most of it. So that's well, when you I would mean, work yeah. with. That's when you would work with your agronomist, uh, you crop know, advisor, crop whatever. advisor, basically to come up, you know, with a prescription for what they're seeing in the field, what they're seeing yeah. from the multispectral mapping. I think one of the things that has surprised me that I thought would be a bigger sticking point for this is price point. I, I always thought. I, I guess I thought like people were going to be like, oh my gosh, X amount of dollars is way too much. You know, they're expensive drones. I mean, once you get the batteries and stuff, you're in the mid $20,000 or so. Right. Yeah. Um, 
But I, that hasn't been as much of an issue as I guess I thought it'd be, and probably because farming equipment is typically expensive anyway, yeah. you know, so are way more expensive than what these drones are. Right. Uh, so I've been kind of surprised by that. Um, I think one of the other big hurdles is is just public perception in some mm -hmm. ways. You know, I think there's still that uh, sort of thought in people's mind, especially, you know, there's a thought in mind when they see a drone that they're being spied on in general, but then when they see a giant drone that sprays, yeah. their yeah. minds really go crazy with yeah. what somebody could do, with it. and they're right. You know, yeah. certainly- In the wrong hands, In the it wrong could be hands, it could be yeah. a horrible thing, just like a car can be, just like anything can yeah. be. Yeah, you know? and, and yeah, I mean, drones are here to stay, yep. and, the FAA is is their I mean their their primary concern is basically safety you know yeah if you can show that you can do a certain activity by drone and it's just as safe or safer than a manned operation yeah then it'll probably have you know success yeah um, you know one of the things I mean I I feel like one of the big hurdles and I actually got this from uh, Dr. Christopher Henry, he, he had mentioned, uh, he, he, he works a lot in aviation. I've known him for years, hey Christopher. And this um, is a comment that he sent to us, right? He yeah, us and, 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 uh, but he, he had sent us a comment basically saying that, you know, aviation professionals, they have a set of standards and rules, uh, which is great because you follow those, you know, they build upon those, they, they learn more and more things of, you know, what went wrong, what didn't, you know, what went right, you right. know. And he was also saying that, you know, when you're using drones, a lot of times those professionals that are using the drones are not aviation professionals. It's <laughs> right. almost like a, a second thing. It's a tool, yeah. but they are in the air. Well, it's so. like our police department. Like our police guys are not drone pilots first and then police second. They're police right. officers first exactly. who adopted a drone to use as a tool. Yeah. yeah. And, but, the fact that it is a flying machine and the bigger the machine, um, you know, you have to have uh, kind of rules in place, you know, whether it's the company or the profession, the person that's doing the, uh, the spraying, um, they have to have rules in place to basically Run the operation safely. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, right. yeah. I mean, we got to have, you got to have, you know, pre flight checks. You got to have rules. Look, pre flight checks, we just did a video on this not long ago. I wrecked an M300, and basically it's because I didn't, I'm a Matrice 300, expensive drone, and I just didn't lock the arm. Stupid mistake, but anybody could do it. Mm -hmm. um, we shared that story because we know that, you know, it happens to a lot of people, and it, it's, it's a reminder so that it doesn't happen to you. That's why we talk about it, but that's why it is important. And like Chris Henry was saying, yeah. uh, you know, you gotta have those checks and balances um, yeah. with any drone yeah. operation, yeah. and especially spraying. When you're spraying, yeah. you gotta make sure what you're spraying is legal, that you're not spraying on somebody else's property on accident, the really? drift, you know. Yeah. A lot of different things go but, into compliance. I, I, yeah, and, and I just think that's a pretty, you know, powerful uh, comment because if you think about it, it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, this, they're not in aviation 100% for their occupation or their job or whatever. Right. So now, you know, you've got this uh, culture, like an aviation culture that, you know, and if you're in aviation, you're in the aviation culture. But the drone culture is a little bit different because you've got, you know, construction guys using drones. Yes. You've got farmers using drones. Yep. And yeah, search and rescue. All these people now are kind of in aviation. So yeah. that's probably what scares the hell out of, you know, FA and other people. Anybody else, yeah. But that's that's stuff that we have to work work through and work out and I'm sure that when the car was originally invented, there were people going like, what are they doing? That's crazy. Right. But eventually everybody came around and now there's cars, you yeah. know? And I think the same thing will happen eventually with drones. Yeah, For, what was Ford's thing? You know, like if you asked people what they wanted, they would have said, you know, faster horses or something like that, <laughs> exactly. or more horses and yes. it's like, yeah. I just want, I want a car that flies. I don't want drones. <laughs> exactly. I would like a car that flies. All right, so I think we're good for today. We covered uh, a lot of ground here. Uh, thank you guys so much for checking out the channel, for checking out our podcast. We're going to do these every couple of weeks uh, and just kind of whatever comes to our minds. But if you've got ideas, if you've got things you want to hear us talk about, if you've got questions, send them to us. Put them in the comments below. Shoot us an email. You'll see that up on the screen as well. But we appreciate you stopping by. Michael, happy birthday. Thanks, buddy. All right. Appreciate it. All right. All right. We will see you next see time. See you guys.